welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel. My daughter's kindergarten class is doing an inquiry into space. They're building a spaceship out of cardboard boxes and milk jugs and tinfoil and whatever else they can find. They're a pretty creative bunch, so I'm sure it'll be amazing. I can't wait to see it. Right now, I'm in her room, looking up at the stars on the ceiling, made by a light that projects stars all over the room. My older daughter loves space and had a space party last year with lots of glow sticks and a space suit. So as you can see, we're very interested in space at our home. How about you? Do you like looking up into the night sky to see the moon and the stars? Have you ever looked through a telescope to see them up close? What do you think it would be like to be an astronaut in space, floating around in anti-gravity on the International Space Station, like Commander Chris Hadfield? Today, we're going on a trip to space, so it'll be your chance to find out. Climb aboard my brand new spaceship, the Star Bouncer, and buckle up. We're going to the moon. Lie down on the floor or on your bed, or sit somewhere you're comfortable. Close your eyes. We're going to do the calm down countdown. I'm going to count down from 10, and all you have to do is follow along with your breath. Ready? like a globe, something you'd find in a classroom, but brighter and more beautiful. It's surrounded by the blackest black, a glowing marble in space. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. We're going to go for a walk on the moon now. Open the hatch and climb out of the spaceship and onto the moon's surface. Wow, it's so quiet here. Look up at the stars. We can see them so much more clearly here. They're bright dots of white light. Let's just breathe for a moment here gazing up at the stars, looking at the earth from a distance. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. One more time. Breathe in and out. Good. How is the moon formed? Many scientists believe that the moon was originally a piece of the earth that got knocked off billions of years ago. Think about that for a second. Isn't it cool to think that the moon may have once been part of the earth? And now it's out here, a separate entity, but still connected to the earth because it silently orbits or rotates around the earth. 
and its gravitational pull affects our Earth's tides. This means that when the Earth is closer to the moon, we'll see high tides being pulled by the moon's gravitation. And when we're farther from the moon, it's low tides that we see. Here on the moon, it's quiet and peaceful and calm. You can think of it as a place that you can go to when life on Earth is getting too busy or tough. Just close your eyes and take a short trip to your moon, your quiet, calm place that's still part of the world, but a separate part. When you're calm and ready, go back down to Earth. Let's take one last look around. Space is dark and cool, and the stars are brightly shining. Looking down, we see the rocky, dusty, gray surface of the moon. The moon has almost no atmosphere, so that means the dusty surface will not change for a very, very long time. So if you wrote your name on the moon with your finger, it'll be there your entire life and beyond. Let's make our mark. Imagine that you're writing your name in the dust. Imagine your finger making your letters. See each letter in your mind. When you're done, look down at your name, written clearly in the dust. There, that's now your special spot on the moon. No one else can go there except for you. Whenever you're feeling nervous or upset or anxious, you can close your eyes and go back to that same spot on your moon. Breathe and calm down before heading back to Earth. Let's spend our last minute on the moon breathing deeply. Look at the Earth while you do. Think about the things down on Earth that you love. Trees, blue sky, puppies, sunflowers, the ocean, someone you love, someone who loves you. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. It's time to go back to Earth now. But don't worry. Remember, you can come back to your special spot on the moon anytime. Just close your eyes, do the calm down countdown, and you'll be there. Breathe, and then come back to Earth, ready to face any challenge and ready to go. Thanks for joining me today. And until next time, peace out and peace within. Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel. My daughter's kindergarten class is doing an inquiry into space. They're building a spaceship out of cardboard boxes and milk jugs and tinfoil and whatever else they can find. They're a pretty creative bunch, so I'm sure it'll be amazing. I can't wait to see it. Right now, I'm in her room looking up at the stars on the ceiling made by a light that projects stars all over the room. My older daughter loves space and had a space party last year with lots of glow sticks and a space suit. So as you can see, we're very interested in space at our home. How about you? Do you like looking up into the night sky to see the moon and the stars? Hello, 
Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel. My daughter's kindergarten class is doing an inquiry into space. They're building a spaceship out of cardboard boxes and milk jugs and tinfoil and whatever else they can find. Slowly, and lives on the land. So we'll be able to breathe and be comfortable underwater. Let's... Hello, it's Chanel, and this is Peace Out. Stories to help you calm down and relax. The Peace Out podcast is part of Bedtime FM. Did you know that Bedtime FM has another amazing podcast of children's stories? My daughters love it and listen to it every night before they go to sleep. If you're on a podcast app, search for Storytime or go to bedtime.fm slash storytime. I live in Canada and it's winter and very cold here right now. I love winter sports like snowboarding, skating and tobogganing. But I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind being on a beach somewhere warm right now too. So I thought today we'd go on an adventure, an underwater adventure. Have you ever gone swimming at the beach or in a pool? Well, today we're going to dive in deep into the ocean of our imagination. Let's start by sitting on the floor, crossing your legs. Close your eyes. Let's take a few deep breaths together. We'll breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. Ready? Breathe in, 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 and out. Out, out. Breathe in. Imagine you're sitting on a boat. Is it a sailboat with a big billowing sail snapping in the wind? Is it a speedboat that goes so fast it looks like it's bouncing across the blue waves? Wherever you are, let's sit there for a moment. Take another deep breath in and let it out. Pretend the boat that you're on is gliding along the water. Feel the sun warming your face. The gentle breeze is blowing through your hair. Ah, does that feel so nice? Okay, I think we're far enough out into the ocean now. Can you help me check? Okay, let's look back to make sure we're far enough. We'll start by turning our heads slowly to the right side. You can keep your eyes closed, and now turn your head to one side as far as you comfortably can. Now turn it back to the center. Good. Now let's turn our head slowly to the left side as far as you comfortably can. Perfect. Turn back to the center. I think we're far enough now. We have our diving mask oxygen tank and suit on so we'll be able to breathe and be comfortable underwater. Let's dive in. Lie down on the floor now as we prepare for our underwater adventure. Great. Breathe through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathe in as long as you can and breathe out as long as you can. Ready? Breathe in through your nose. One, two, three, and out through your mouth. One, two, three. Amazing! Wow, we're in the water now. It's so quiet down here. So blue 
and beautiful. When you're in the water, you feel lighter and buoyant, like you can almost float. Let's take 10 seconds to feel ourselves getting lighter. I'm going to count to 10, and as I do, I want you to imagine that you're getting lighter and lighter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do you feel like you're floating? Now that we're comfortable in the water, let's see if we can find any underwater creatures here. Oh, look, there's a jellyfish. Jellyfish are shaped like an umbrella and have long tentacles. They move by expanding and contracting their bodies to push the water and move forward. Let's pretend to be jellyfish. When you breathe in, you're contracting your belly or pulling it in. And when you breathe out, you're expanding your belly, just like jellyfish. Let's take a few breaths, and whenever you breathe out, I want you to pretend that your fingers are tentacles and wiggle them. Let's practice right now. Can you wiggle your fingers right now? All right. Ready? Breathe in and out. Breathe in and pull your belly in towards the ground. Breathe out and let your belly expand. Wiggle your fingers now too. Okay, let's breathe in, pulling your belly toward the ground, and breathe out, let your belly expand, and wiggle your fingers. Okay, one more time. Breathe in and pull your belly in, and breathe out, and let your belly expand. Wiggling those tentacles. You are amazing, jellyfish. Well done. Ooh, now I see a long eel. An eel looks a lot like a snake. It's very long. Stretch out your arms as far as you can on the floor now. Got it? Wow, your arms are now eels. Lift them up off the floor. And now let them float back down onto the floor. Lift your arms up again. And let them float back down. Beautiful. Do you think you can be a starfish? I do. Stretch out your arms and your legs. Yes, just like that. Stretch them so that you make a star shape with your body. Wasn't that easy? You're a starfish. Do you know what I see now? It's a squiggly, wiggly octopus. How many tentacles does an octopus have? Eight. Now, we only have two arms and two legs. That makes four. But we can still pretend to be an octopus, right? Yes, we can. Let's imagine that we have eight tentacles like an octopus. Stretch out your arms and legs again like we did for the starfish. Now move them back and forth like you're making a snow angel. Back and forth. Back and forth. What a wiggly octopus you are. Great work. Uh-oh. Do you know what's coming up next? It's got a triangular fin, has sharp teeth, and slices through the water. It's a shark. Yikes. Okay, let's bend one knee up so that your foot is still on the ground, but your knee is reaching towards the ceiling. You're making a triangle with your leg in the floor, just like a shark's fin. Now let's stretch out that leg onto the floor. 
and do the same with the other leg. Bend your other leg so that your knee is up and your foot is still on the floor. Now stretch that leg back down. Scary shark. There's one last sea creature that we haven't met yet. Dolphins. Dolphins are intelligent mammals that can talk to each other. Wow. They jump up out of the water and splash back in. Let's curve our backs like a dolphin. Bring your knees up to your chest and give them a big hug. Now rock gently up and down or back and forth, whichever feels more comfortable. Rocking, rocking, rocking. Feel the nice stretch and little back massage that you're giving yourself. Perfect. Now slowly let go of your knees and let them float back down to the ground. Well, it's time to go back up to the surface and out of the water. Our deep sea diving adventure is almost over. Once we get out of the water, our bodies will feel a bit heavier. Move your hands down so that they're right by your sides. Make sure your palms are facing down and touching the floor. Press your hands onto the floor. Feel that connection to the ground again. Now try pressing your legs into the floor. And now your back. And then your head. And now press your hands into the floor again. We're grounded. We're back onto our boat now. Our diving mask and oxygen tanks are no longer needed. Let's take a couple more deep breaths of fresh air. Breathe in and out. In and out. Beautiful. You did so well today. I'm so proud of you. I hope you're feeling more relaxed now. You've dived under the sea, so now you can do anything. Thank you for joining me today. And until next time, peace out and peace within. tortoise decided to have a race one day. The hare was sure that he'd have no trouble winning because he was so fast. The tortoise thought she had a good chance of winning too, because even though she was slow, she never gave up. Let's be part of the action and do the actions of the hare and the tortoise as they race. The hare runs very fast. Bend your knees and lift your legs off the ground so that it looks like you're sitting in a chair that's lying flat on the floor. Now move your legs like you're running very fast. And while you're running, think about how your legs are feeling right now, moving through the air. Heavy, light, is this easy? Are your leg muscles getting tired? Now gently let your legs float back flat on the floor. Give them a little wiggle. Now relax them and let them fall where it feels comfortable. Now let's be the tortoise and pretend to be moving forward with our arms. Stretch your arms straight out to either side. 
you should be making a lowercase t shape with your body. Make sure your palms are facing up. I'm going to ask you to bring your arms up and touch your palms together above your chest like you're clapping. And as you do this, take a deep breath in. Then, when you bring your arms down to the floor again, breathe out. Ready? Touch your palms together and breathe in. Lower your arms down to the floor and breathe out. Bring your palms together again, breathing in. Lower your arms down and breathe out. Keep going, following your own breath as you move your arms up and down. Feel the air flow past your hands and arms as you move them up and down. Now let your arms gently rest on the ground. The hare kept running as fast as he could. The tortoise moved slowly but steadily. During the race, the hare looked behind him and saw how far behind the tortoise was and stopped and began to laugh. Breathe in through your nose, and as you breathe out, say the word, ha. Breathe in through your nose, and breathe out, ha. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out, ha. One more time, breathe in, and out, ha. After laughing so much, the hare decided to show off and have a nap to show everyone watching how confident he was that he'd win. But as the hare napped, the tortoise didn't stop, but kept moving forward, step by step. Now let's breathe in through our nose, and this time breathe out by blowing the air from our mouths, just like you're blowing bubbles. Ready? Breathe in through the nose, and now blow those bubbles. Breathe in and out. In and out. Good. Who do you think won the race? I'm sure that many of you have heard this tale before and know the answer from the story. But if we weren't talking about two animals, but people, do you think it's better to always be stronger and super fast, or slow but steady, or both, or something entirely different? Does it change depending on the situation? Do different things work for different people? I'd love to hear what you think. Could you leave us a comment on our Bedtime FM Facebook page? Or tweet us at Peace Out Podcast. For the parents and teachers, if you have a photo of your children or your class listening to Peace Out, we'd love to see that too. Thank you for listening. I'm so happy that you made the choice to calm down and slow down today like our tortoise friend. Until next time, peace out and peace within. Today's Peace Out story was written and narrated by me, Chanel Sang. Sound and editing by Rob Griffiths. Peace Out is part of Bedtime FM, an independent podcast network. Bedtime FM was founded by Rob Griffiths, and is run entirely by a small group of awesome parents who volunteer their time to bring fun and original stories to children around the world. If you like what you hear, please consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash bedtime. Donations help us keep all our shows ad-free. You can listen to all our Peace Out episodes at bedtime.fm slash peaceout. 
And don't forget to check out our Storytime podcast at bedtime.fm slash storytime. Or you can listen to both on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hello, this is Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel, and I'm glad you're here. Today's story is perfect for when you're in the car or sitting somewhere where you can't move around a lot. Today we won't have any movements in our story, just sitting, breathing, and imagining. So let's go. You're probably already sitting, so we're off to a good start. Make any adjustments needed to your body to make sure you're super comfortable. Close your eyes and breathe. As always, let's start with the calm down countdown. This is something you can try on your own when you're feeling upset. Just put yourself on pause, breathe, and count down from 10, like this. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Shinran yoku is a Japanese word that means forest bathing. What is forest bathing, you may be thinking right now? Well, it's just what it sounds like. Being in the forest, being close to nature, using all your senses to experience nature, just like you're bathing in it. Shinran yoku is becoming more and more known And there have even been doctors and scientists that have studied forest bathing and how it can help us relieve stress and become more calm. Since we're not in a real forest right now, let's use our imaginations to take a walk through a forest in our mind. Keeping your eyes closed, let's pretend to use our sense of sight. Start imagining trees all around you. Big, tall oaks. Beautiful white barked birches. Sweet smelling pines. What color are the trees? You might be imagining full, lush spring greenery. Or maybe the reds, oranges, and golds of autumn. Maybe the only green is the evergreen trees, and the branches of the other trees are dusted with white, powdery snow. Keep that picture of your special forest in your mind. Now let's picture ourselves moving forwards into the forest. What else do you see? Use your imagination to fill in the other things in your forest. You get to decide the colors, the textures, how it all looks. There's no right or wrong answer here. It's your forest. Now let's stop for a breather here. We're going to use our sense of smell now. Take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Another breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. One more time, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good.
Pretend now that you're breathing in the natural, earthy smells of the forest. What does it smell like? Okay, let's keep moving through our forest. Watch for that dip in the path. Think about what you're seeing and passing as you make your way along through the trees. See that tree in front of you? Pretend to reach out now and touch the trunk of that tree. What does it feel like? Now let's crouch down and press our hand on the green mossy roots that reach into the earth. Imagine how that might feel against your hand. Let's keep going further into the forest. Keep imagining the sights, the sounds, and the smells. Now, for the sense of taste, I have to say, there are many things in the forest that we cannot eat because they can make us sick. So next time you're out in the woods, the real woods, please check with the grown-up first. But for now, let's pretend we stumbled upon a strawberry plant. Look at those round green leaves and plump red berries. Yummy! Imagine yourself picking out the reddest, juiciest, biggest strawberry. Hold it in your hand for a second. Imagine how it looks right now. Every detail to the teeny yellow seeds and the green fuzzy stem. Imagine how sweet it smells. Now take a bite. Imagine how it feels as you bite into that juicy strawberry. Mmm. We're almost out of the woods now. I can see a clearing up ahead. We're already sitting. So let's pretend that we're sitting on the grass right now. Keep your eyes closed. Feel the grass and the ground under you. Straighten your back. Gently roll your shoulders back. Pretend there's a golden thread attached to the top of your head and someone is gently tugging it upwards toward the sky. Keep that posture and breathe. The last sense we're going to explore is sound. Imagine what you might hear in a forest. What types of animals would you hear as they go about their business around you? There's a good breeze right now, rushing past us. What sounds does it leave in its wake? Now, let's listen for the real sounds around us, right here, in this car, or in this classroom, or at your home. Outside? You're no longer in the forest. You're right where you are. What do you hear right now? What do you smell? Open your eyes. What do you see? Well done. I hope you're able to visit a real forest soon. And if you aren't near a forest, even just being outside with a bit of grass, a tree or two and the blue sky overhead can help you calm down as you play and hang out there. Really, give it a try. I want to end this story with a beautiful quote by Reginald Holmes. Here it is. The earth has its music for those who will listen. Thank you for listening today. And until next time, peace out. And peace within.
The Peace Out Podcast is part of Bedtime FM, an independent podcast network founded by Rob Griffiths. Today's story was written and narrated by Chanel Sang. Sound and editing by Rob Griffiths. You can listen to past Peace Out episodes at bedtime.fm slash peaceout or on your podcast app. If you're looking for fun stories to listen to, check out the Storytime podcast at bedtime.fm slash storytime or on any podcast app. If you liked what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes to help other parents and teachers find our podcast and encourage mindfulness and peace in their children too. Thanks again. Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel. Today's story, Dandelion Days, is dedicated to David, my friend in the UK, who, I'm told, loves dandelions. Hello, David. Let's start by sitting down somewhere comfortable. If you're feeling a bit wiggly, Take a few moments now to adjust your body so you're more comfortable. There. Now, let's adjust our posture here. Sit up tall and roll your shoulders gently back. Imagine a thread attached to the very top of your head. It's a gold thread that someone is gently tugging upwards. Try to keep still in this posture with a straight back and your chin parallel to the floor. Close your eyes and let's do the calm down countdown. I'm going to count down from 10, and all you have to do is breathe. If you'd like, try breathing in as I count, and breathe out in between the numbers. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. Keeping your eyes closed, imagine that it's a nice day outside and you're climbing up a hill. It's a green grassy hill and the blades of grass are waving back and forth as the breeze blows gently across. If you'd like, you can also wave your body gently from side to side too. As you get higher and higher up the hill, you start to see something yellow appearing up near the top. What is it? Let's take a few more steps and we'll be at the top of the hill. There. It's a huge field, as far as the eye can see. The grass here is a deep, flat green. The sky above is blue, your favorite shade of blue. Can you see it? And the entire field is covered in bright, round, yellow dandelions. Imagine yourself moving towards all those yellow wildflowers. Dandelions are usually thought of as weeds, something people don't want in their garden, and that spread quickly. But I've always liked dandelions. To me, seeing them pop up tells me that summer is just around the corner, and that makes me happy. So 
let's lie down now. We're going to pretend to lie down on the grass now, surrounded by the dandelions. And while you're getting comfortable, here are a couple quick facts about this plant. The word dandelion comes from French, dent de lion, which means lion's tooth. They called it that because of the sharp serrated leaves. And when the yellow petals on the dandelion head dry out and fall off, that's when you see the fluffy white dandelion seeds. And did you know that dandelions are edible? They're very high in vitamin A, C, and K, as well as calcium and iron. All good stuff we need to keep our bodies healthy and strong. You can use the leaves in salads and even make dandelion jam. Okay, are you comfortable? Good. We're going to imagine that we're a dandelion seed. I think it's really neat how the seeds have their own little fluffy parachute that carries them through the air so that they can find a place to plant themselves. Let's pretend that we're curled up inside the dandelion. Bring your knees to your chest and give them a hug. If you'd like, gently rock yourself from side to side to give yourself a little back massage. Imagine that you're sitting on a gigantic green stem now. You're curled up as you are, surrounded by soft yellow petals. Now imagine that the petals are beginning to fall off one by one. And now it's your turn to unfurl. Take your time and slowly release your knees and let them gently float back down to the ground while you stretch out your arms overhead. Now let's stretch. Point your toes and stretch them towards the wall. Stretch your arms above your head toward the other wall. And now release and relax everything on the ground. Now that we're out with all the other dandelion seeds, what now? Well, what do you usually do if you see a fluffy white dandelion? Let's pretend a child has picked our flower and is about to make a wish on it. We're going to breathe in through our nose now and then breathe out through our lips like we're making a wish on the dandelion. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. One more time, breathe in and out. Great. Now here's the fun part. Let's pretend we're now soaring through the air on a warm spring breeze. Keep your eyes closed. If your arms are still above your head, you can move them down by your side. Let your arms relax there. Let your feet and knees fall wherever they want to fall. Keep breathing in and out as we fly across the air. The grassy field and other dandelions are zooming by below us. And if you look up, you can see the white clouds moving across the bright blue sky. The wind is bringing you past a few trees, and you're weaving in and around them now. Not too fast, and not too slow. Just sort of floating on the breeze. Gently gliding forward, and up and down. The breeze is starting to slow down, so you're getting closer to the ground. We're in a new field now. What do you see in this field? Imagine yourself slowing down, gently bobbing lower towards the ground. Look around the field now and pick a spot where you'd like to land. Now imagine yourself floating towards that spot. And now you've landed. 
roll over onto your stomach now. You can use your arms as a pillow. And keep your eyes closed. After some time, you settle into the earth and plant your roots down into the ground. You become a new dandelion plant, growing tall and strong. Your bright yellow petals blooming and then falling off. And then the parachute seeds come out and fly off on their own journey, just like you did. Thank you for listening today. I hope this has helped you feel calmer and more relaxed. Until next time, peace out and peace within. The Peace Out Podcast is part of the Bedtime FM Independent Podcast Network, founded by Rob Griffiths. Today's story was written and narrated by Chanel Sang. Sound and editing by Rob Griffiths. Listen to past Peace Out stories at bedtime.fm slash peaceout or on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Follow us on Facebook at Bedtime FM or on Twitter at Peace Out Podcast. Thanks again. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. This is Peace Out, stories for relaxation and calming down. My name is Chanel, and no matter what time of day it is, I hope that this story will help you feel more at peace or relaxed. Do you have a favorite superhero? Mine was always Wonder Woman. I thought she was so cool and brave and beautiful. And I like that she had black hair, just like me. What makes superheroes so super? Some might have special powers like flying, super strength, or super speed. Today's relaxation story was inspired by superheroes. So it's up, up, and away. It's time to save the day. Start by sitting somewhere comfortable. Use this time to make any adjustments to your body so that you're as comfortable as can be. Sit up tall, roll your shoulders back gently, and lift your chin so that it is parallel to the floor. We're going to focus on our breathing right now as we do the calm down countdown. I'm going to count down from 10, and as I do, just breathe. Close your eyes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Which superpower should we do first? Why don't we start from the top and work our way down? Let's pretend to be a superhero who's super smart. I bet that you're already super smart, so let's give that big brain of yours a massage. Reach your hands up and place your fingers gently on your head. Move your fingers slowly to give yourself a relaxing head massage. a superhero who can really stretch their body like an elastic band. Staying seated, place your feet together now and your knees out to the sides so that you're making a diamond with your legs. 
Hold your feet and lean forward as far as you comfortably can. Stretch. Excellent. Now stretch your legs out in front of you and give them a wiggle. Let's lie down now. Point your toes and reach up over your head and stretch your arms out. Let's imagine that we're flying through the air. What do you see below you? What are we flying over? And look above and around you. What's in the sky right now? Now look back down and look for a safe place to land. Did you find it? Okay, good. Now let's stretch out one last time. Point your toes and reach and release. Let it go. We've landed safely. Let's just rest here now for a moment. Take a deep breath in and let it out. Breathe in and out. One more time, in and out. Superheroes do amazing things to help people. They give up a part of themselves in order to help others. What if I told you that you could be a superhero too? You can also make a big difference in someone's life. There's one superpower that is not only powerful, but it's something anyone can do. It's the superpower of compassion. Compassion is seeing someone in trouble or hurt or sad and wanting to help. And if you see someone in need and not only want to help, but do something to help, then I bet that you've made someone's day or even made someone feel happier or safer. And that's huge. Can you think back to the last time someone else helped you when you were feeling down or left out or hurt? Can you remember how you felt when they did? We can all practice compassion every day. So next time you see someone who's alone at recess and might need a friend or someone who looks really upset, you can be a superhero to them simply by asking if they're okay or if you can do anything to help or just by sitting quietly with them or inviting them to play with you and your friends. There are so many ways that we can help and be kind. The important thing is just to look out for those chances and to do something about it. Let's end today with a few deep breaths. Let's pretend we're breathing in good thoughts and good ideas. And when we're breathing out, we're breathing out the negative thoughts and the negative ideas. Ready? Let's breathe in and out. Let's breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. One more time in and out. Thank you for joining me today. How are you feeling now? I hope you're feeling more relaxed. And until next time, peace out and peace within. What did you think of today's Peace Out story? We love to hear from our listeners. Send us a note or photo of yourself listening to our Facebook at Bedtime FM or on Twitter at Peace Out Podcast. The Peace Out Podcast is part of the Bedtime FM family of podcasts founded by Rob Griffiths. Today's story was written and narrated by Chanel Sang, that's me, and sound and editing was by Rob Griffiths. Listen to our past episodes at bedtime.fm slash peaceout or on iTunes, 
Google Play, or Stitcher. Looking for children's audio stories for bedtime or to enhance literacy and listening skills? Listen to our stories podcast, Storytime, at bedtime.fm slash storytime or on iTunes or any podcast app. Thanks again. Hi, it's Chanel, your Peace Out narrator. Before we start today's story, I wanted to tell you about an exciting giveaway happening on our Facebook page right now. We're giving away a $50 Amazon gift card. All you have to do is share our contest post and tag us as well as a friend or two. Maybe even mention which story time or peace out story your children like the best. We want more parents and teachers to know about us so that they can bring fun stories and mindfulness into their homes and classrooms too. Share our contest post as many times as you can before April 1st, 2017, and we'll enter your name for each time you do. The lucky winner will be chosen on April 3rd, 2017. Good luck, and thanks for helping us spread the word. again. Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel and I'm very excited you're here today because today we have a really cool story about something that changes forms. It is so powerful that it can lift up a whale. It is something we use every day. In fact, it's something we need. And it's something that is old, as old as dinosaurs. It's water. We're going to use our imaginations and pretend to be one little drop of water and see what happens when we go through the entire water cycle. We'll go up to the clouds, come down as rain, slide down a waterfall. Let's go. going to start off sitting today. Take this time now to find a comfortable spot and you can sit however you feel comfortable. Sit up tall and close your eyes and let's focus on our breathing right now. Just continue breathing as you are. And now begin to take notice of your breathing. How the air feels going through your nose how your tummy expands as you breathe in. How the breath feels going out of your nose or mouth. Keep thinking about how your breathing feels and sounds for the next few breaths. As I do the calm down countdown, keep focusing on your breathing. Ten, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Imagine that you're a tiny drop of water, liquid. You're in the condensation part of the water cycle and you're part of a cloud in the blue sky. You're floating around with other drops of water in the air. Start to wave your body from left to right. Left to right. Now there are more and more water droplets coming closer together as it condenses. Make your movements a little shorter as it gets tighter. cloud is too heavy now and you start to fall. This is the precipitation part of the water cycle. When you're ready, lie down. 
If you're not already closing your eyes, close them now. Imagine that you're a raindrop now, and you're falling towards the earth. Can you feel the wind rushing past your ears? Can you feel your body falling faster and faster? Splash! Some of your raindrop friends land onto the soil and become groundwater. Some will be drunk by animals and plants. Splash! Other raindrops fell into the ocean. Splash! You've just landed in a river. The water is cool and sweeping you down towards a waterfall. Put your hands palms down beside your body and your feet flat on the ground so that your knees are up. Lift your legs straight up in the air now, so that your feet are pointing toward the ceiling. Now, slowly let your feet back down to the ground. Lift them up again, and let them down. Lift them up one more time, and let them back down. We made it down the waterfall. Extend your legs back onto the ground. Now we're floating down the river again, and you can feel the warm sun. It's shining brightly on you, and you're getting warmer and warmer. And suddenly, you're not liquid anymore. The heat has changed you into a gas. You're in the evaporation stage now. You're no longer liquid water, you're gas, water vapor and you're floating back up through the air, higher and higher. Reach your arms above your head and stretch while you breathe in. Breathe out and relax your arms now. Breathe in and stretch. Breathe out and relax. Breathe in and stretch. Breathe out and relax. Wonderful. Now we're in the air and floating. The air up here is cooler and it's cooling us down. A lot of the other water are now huddling close together and we're slowly forming a cloud. We're back in the condensation part of the water cycle back to where we started and soon we'll turn back into liquid rain and fall back to earth to begin the cycle again but for now let's pause here and do a couple more deep breaths before we go keep those eyes closed put one hand on your heart and one hand on your stomach breathe in and out and as you do Notice how your body moves as you're breathing. Take a few more breaths on your own now, keeping your hands where they are. Great work, everyone. Thank you for going on this journey with me today. Until next time, peace out and peace within. Peace Out is part of the Bedtime FM network, founded by Rob Griffiths. Today's story was written and narrated by Chanel Sang, and sound and editing by Rob. You can listen to past stories at bedtime.fm slash peaceout, or on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Salutations! Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. I'm Chanel, and I'm very pleased that you joined me today, because today we have a very special guest, 
my daughter, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Hello. How old are you, Caitlin? Six. And what grade are you in? Grade one. Do you listen to Peace Out? Yes. What do you like best about it? It could help other people calm down. <laughs> okay, and today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about asthma. Now, Caitlin, you have asthma, don't you? Yeah. Could you, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit about asthma? Well, I could also have trouble breathing, so that's why I always take medicine. But I don't eat the medicine. I just, like, breathe it. Thank you, Caitlin. Now, before you go, would you like to do the calm down countdown for us? Sure. For this, you can either sit or lie down, whichever is more comfortable. Close your eyes. And while Caitlin counts down from 10, keep your eyes closed and focus on your breathing. You can breathe in every time she says a number or just breathe at your own pace. Ready? For those of you who do not have asthma, this is going to give you an idea of how it might feel. Everyone, take a deep breath right now. When you breathe, the air flows through your nose or mouth, down your windpipe, which is called the trachea, and through the airways, which are called bronchial tubes, and into your lungs. And from there, the lungs make sure that the oxygen is absorbed into your bloodstream, spreading to your entire body. For those who have asthma, their bronchial tubes or their airways are extra sensitive. This means when there's a trigger, the airway will become constricted or tightened or inflamed and sometimes filled with mucus. This makes the space very narrow and hard for the air to flow through. Triggers could be different things like being sick, cold weather, allergies, or after running around a lot. Let's all try something right now. Pinch your nose and breathe through your mouth. So far, so good, right? Now with your other hand, make a circle as if you're holding onto a microphone. Bring your microphone to your mouth and breathe only through the hole that you've made with your hand. Do you feel any difference yet? Some of you may, some may not. Now, make that hole smaller and make sure you're only breathing through that hole. Okay, now make the hole even smaller as if you're holding on to a straw. Breathe only through that imaginary straw now. How did that feel? Now imagine you could only breathe that way all the time. It'd be really tough, wouldn't it? That's why some people need to use an inhaler. The inhaler delivers a medicine that will help open up the airways, which helps that person breathe normally. I wanted to share one breathing exercise that I found helpful, and after doing some reading, many others find useful too. It's called belly breathing. When you're breathing from your belly, your belly will expand when you breathe in instead of your chest, 
and then dip in as you breathe out. This is supposed to help you get as much air as possible. Let's try it now. You can stay seated or laying down and place your hands on your belly. Let's pretend your belly is a balloon. What color is your balloon? We're going to inflate your balloon as we breathe in. But when we breathe out, your balloon will slowly deflate. Ready? Remember, when you breathe in, your belly will go out. When you breathe out, bring your belly in. Breathe in now. Feel your balloon inflate. Breathe out and feel your balloon going down. Breathe in, your belly is expanding. And breathe out, your belly is going in. Keep belly breathing at your own pace now. Try to breathe in longer each time. And let your breath out slowly, pulling your belly to your backbone. Amazing, everyone. Give belly breathing a try sometime, whether or not you have trouble breathing. If you do have asthma, talk to your family about it, and maybe it's something you can try when you begin feeling short of breath. But of course, make sure you use your inhaler when you need it. And if you have a friend with asthma and see them having trouble breathing, a kind thing for you to do is to offer to go with them to the school office to get their inhaler, or let a grown-up know. Or just sit out of the game for a few minutes with them to keep them company if they want. Being a kind friend is definitely a breath of fresh air for everyone. Thank you for listening, and until next time, peace out. And peace within. If you'd like to listen to more Peace Out relaxation stories, you can find them at bedtime.fm slash peaceout or on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. Today's Peace Out story was written and narrated by me, Chanel Sang, with special guest, Caitlin Sang. The super fantastic sound and editing was done by Rob Griffiths. Don't forget to enter our contest on Facebook. We're giving away a $50 Amazon gift card to one lucky winner. Details are on our Facebook page at Bedtime FM. You can enter today and every day until April 1st, 2017. We'll announce the winner on our Facebook on April 3rd, 2017. Good luck and thanks for helping us spread the word. It all starts with a seed. Lie down on the floor or on your bed on one side. Curl up and hug your knees to your chest. Get comfortable. Plants need a few things to grow. I wonder if you can name some of them. Plants need something bright and warm. Sunlight. Plants need something that's wet. Water. Plants need to breathe. Fresh air. Plants need something brown which is found on the ground. Soil. So let's pretend we're all snuggled up in a pot of soil. Give your knees a little squeeze. Imagine the sun shining right above you. Feel that warmth? It's warming us and it feels so nice. Now the sun is being covered up by some gray clouds. They're rain clouds. Drip, drop, drip, drop. The clouds are moving away now and here comes the sun again. Let's begin to grow. Slowly let go of your knees and let them fall where they do. 
Now slowly reach your arms above your head and slowly stretch your legs out. Once you're all stretched out, bring yourself up so that you're on your knees or sitting down if that's more comfortable. If you're in your bed or prefer to stay on the floor, then that's okay too. Did you know that no matter how you plant a seed, its roots will always push downwards and the plant will somehow always know to grow upwards? Isn't that neat? While no one knows exactly how the plant knows which way is up, many believe that it's because of gravity that they can do this. So let's grow onwards and upwards. We've had sun to give us warmth and light. We've had rain, so we've been watered. Now let's start reaching up, up, up towards the sky. If you're staying on the floor or on your bed, Lay on your back and reach your hands up over your head and stretch your legs out to either side. If you want to stand, go ahead now and stand tall and firm on your feet, shoulder width apart, hands reaching up. Keep this strong stance as you imagine all the yummy and healthy nutrients that you're drawing up from your roots. Breathe in the fresh air through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. In through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Excellent. If you'd like, you can put your arms down and sit or keep laying down. Look at all those beautiful flowers. Take a look at your petals. What color are they? What shape? What type of flower are you? No matter which flower you are, you are beautiful. And if your friends or sister or brother are doing this next to you, they're beautiful too. And there are many other children who will listen to this story from around the world, from Canada to the United States to Australia to the United Kingdom. And everyone could be imagining themselves to be a different flower with different colors different shapes and sizes, growing at different times and speeds, and with a lot of other differences too. And they'll all be beautiful too. Because what is more beautiful than a field full of flowers, diverse in variety? There's beauty and strength in our differences as people too. We can learn so much from each other to become stronger, wiser and kinder. Before we finish, I wanted to share a quote that I thought was perfect for the story. The author is unknown and it goes like this. Every child is a different kind of flower and all together make this world a beautiful garden. I can't wait to see what kind of garden you're going to help make. If you help plant some flowers or other plants this spring, will you let us know? You can take a photo of your plant and have a grown-up help you post it to our Facebook page at Bedtime FM or Twitter at Peace Out Podcast. Until next time, peace out and peace within. Thanks for listening. The Peace Out Podcast is part of Bedtime FM founded by Rob Griffiths. Today's story was written and narrated by Chanel Sang, with sound and editing by Rob Griffiths.
You can listen to more relaxation and mindfulness stories at bedtime.fm slash peace out or on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. This is the last week to enter our Facebook contest to win a $50 or £50 Amazon gift card. Just go to our Facebook page at Bedtime FM and share our contest post, tagging us and a couple of friends. Tell your friends which peace out or story time story is your favorite. Each time you share the post before April 1st, we'll enter your name into the draw. The lucky winner will be announced on our Facebook page on April 3rd, 2017. Good luck. Hi there. Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. I'm Chanel. When was the last time you felt upset? Do you remember why you felt that way? What did you do about it? What made you stop feeling upset? Or are you still feeling that way now? Today, we're going to talk about what we can do when we're upset. There won't be much movement today, so you could choose if you'd like to sit down or lie down. Close your eyes. If you're sitting, sit up straight, roll your shoulders back, and lift up your chin so that it is parallel to the floor. As I do the calm down countdown, try breathing in as I say each number, breathing out in between. Ready? 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Anger is a big emotion. That feeling might start in your mind, but then it quickly affects your body too. You might feel blood rushing to your face and neck so that it becomes red and feels warm. You might feel sweaty or begin to shake or clench your teeth. Everyone reacts differently when they're angry. Right now, we're going to tense up a part of our body and then release it again so that it feels relaxed. We'll start at the top and work our way down. Keep your eyes closed. Start by scrunching up your entire face. Close your eyes tightly. Scrunch up your nose and press your lips together. And now release. Can you feel the difference? Keep it like that as we move to your shoulders. Lift your shoulders up to your ears and now release. Moving down to our arms and hands now, ball up your hands into fists and squeeze them while you also tense up your arm muscles at the same time. Hold it just like that and release. Feel all that tension go away and keep your arms and hands loose. Let's flex our feet now. Point your toes towards your head. You should feel a stretch in your calf muscles behind your leg. And now relax your feet and legs. Keep 
your body feeling loose and relaxed and your eyes closed. When you react, your brain and body works without thinking. It's instantaneous, immediate. In some situations, reactions can keep you safe. If you see a baseball flying towards your head, you'll likely react by ducking down. You don't have to think about it, you'll just do it. That's a reaction that kept you safe. In other situations, reactions can hurt. If someone accidentally steps on my foot and I react by pushing them down, then I've likely hurt them. I also haven't taken the time to realize it was an accident and that they didn't mean to hurt me. I also didn't consider their feelings. Maybe they weren't looking where they were going because they were upset about something. And I certainly didn't respect them by reacting with violence. Instead of reacting, we can respond. Responding means taking a moment to pause and think about what to do next. Remember, reacting is done without thinking, without thinking of the consequences and without thinking of the other person. Being able to pause, think, and then respond can be very hard to remember. And for some, it may be a bigger challenge to do this. But we can try and we can practice. And the more we practice, the easier it will be to remember because it will become a habit. By pausing and thinking about it first, a response is more likely to solve the problem or at least make it better rather than exacerbate it. A thoughtful response will also give us time to understand ourselves better how we think and feel, and also time to think about others and even see things from their point of view. This will all help us make better choices. So how can we remember to respond instead of react when we're upset? We need to be mindful of our thoughts, feelings, reactions, and actions. It can be difficult because if we're hurt or sad or angry, our focus is usually on those big feelings, and it becomes hard to look outside of that. One thing that might help is to remember, pause, then respond. When you pause, you can try taking three deep breaths, doing your own mini calm down countdown. Let's try that now. Take a deep breath in, and let it out. Another deep breath in. And let it out. One more time. Deep breath in. And out. Once you've paused, then you have a moment or two to figure out what to do or say next. What can you do or say next that will help you calm down or calm the other person down? What can you do or say that will make the situation better, or at least not worse? What is a kind thing to do or say? Do you need to get a grown-up you trust to help? And after you've thought it through, then respond. Pause, then respond. I hope that helps you to remember to respond and not react the next time you're feeling angry or upset. I have to still remind myself to do the pause sometimes too. It doesn't always work, but the important thing is that I'm always working on it and trying again and again. That's all you need to do. Thank you for listening today. Until next time, peace out and peace within. This Peace Out episode was written and narrated by me, Chanel Sang. The sound and editing by Rob Griffiths is what pulls the podcast together. Thanks, Rob. Peace Out is a Bedtime FM podcast, and is something we do because we believe in it and we love it. If you're enjoying Peace Out, 
please consider becoming a Patreon or leaving a tip. Your donations help keep our podcast ad-free and allow us to keep doing what we're doing. Go to bedtime.fm slash support and anything you can donate is very much appreciated. Thank you. Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. Today, we're boarding an airplane and using our imaginations to fly through the sky and across the ocean. This is your Captain Chanel speaking, and this is the final boarding call. It's wheels up time. Let's fly. to sit in an upright position on the floor or on their bed. Roll your shoulders back and lift your chin so that it is parallel to the ground. Beautiful. Close your eyes now and imagine where in the world you'd like to travel to as we do the calm down countdown before takeoff. Take a deep breath in as I say each number, breathing out long in between. Ready for takeoff? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, When a plane is taking off, wheels up means that as the plane lifts up into the air, the wheels move and tuck into the plane during the flight. Bring your knees up to your chest and give them a hug, holding on to your elbows or wrists or clasping your hands together whichever is more comfortable. If you'd like, begin to rock gently from side to side. And now give your knees one more tight hug and release. You can stretch your legs out in front of you and give them a wiggle. And then lie down on the ground or on your bed. Close your eyes again and stretch your arms straight out so that they're like airplane wings. Imagine you're flying across the blue, blue sky. It's cooler up here and you're zooming past the wispy white clouds. Feel the cool air rushing past your face. Let's take a deep breath in through our nose. Feel your belly filling up. And now breathe out through your mouth, feeling your belly going down and pushing the air out. Let's do that a couple more times. Deep breath in through your nose, belly's filling up. And breathe out through your mouth, belly's going down. Breathe in through your nose, belly rising up again, and breathe out and feel your belly pushing out the air through your mouth. Great. It's been a smooth flight so far, but we're about to hit an air pocket. That means turbulence. Bring your knees up with your feet flat on the ground Wrap your arms around yourself, giving yourself a hug. Now roll gently from side to side.
One more roll, and now roll right onto one side and rest there. We are now on our final approach to your destination. In the beginning, I asked you where you'd like to go. I want you to imagine your favorite place on Earth. It could be somewhere you've been on vacation to with your family. It could be your own backyard. It could be a place you've never been, but have seen in a TV show or in a book. In that favorite place of yours, think about the sights that you see, the colors, the smells, the sounds, and how you feel when you're there. Keep thinking of your favorite place as you slowly lift yourself up off the floor and back into a seated position. Close your eyes when you're ready. Take a deep breath in as you stretch your arms up high above your head. Stretch. Now breathe out just as deeply as you bring your arms back down. Another deep breath in as you stretch up towards the sky. And breathe out deeply as you bring your arms down. Breathe in as you stretch up. Breathe out as you bring your arms down. Do a couple more of these, following your own breath. We've landed safely. Now, before you open your eyes, let me warn you, you might not actually be in your favorite place, but remember how I asked you to think about how you felt in your favorite place? It was probably a good feeling, since it's somewhere you like to be. So try channeling that good feeling to wherever you are now, be it in school, in the car, or at home, or getting ready for bed, and let that good feeling carry you through the rest of today or into sleep. On behalf of the whole crew at Bedtime FM Airways, we thank you for flying with us today. Until your next flight of imagination, peace out and peace within. Today's Peace Out episode was written, narrated, and piloted by Chanel Sang. The editing and sound engineering was by our head avionics technician, Rob Griffiths. Special shout out to the rest of the Bedtime FM flight crew for their ongoing support. Jess Judd, Kate Mannion, Amy Hayes, and Kelly Colleen. Thank you also to Kira, age 5, for sending in the idea of an airplane story. I hope you liked it. If you want to hear more relaxation and mindfulness stories, head over to bedtime.fm slash peace out. Peace Out is a project that we volunteer our time and energy to do because it's a passion and we're excited about it. We love bringing relaxing stories to your home or classroom. We've been enjoying hearing about how much you like it too. You can always let us know what you think by tweeting us at Peace Out Podcast or connecting to our Facebook page at Bedtime FM, or by email at peaceout at bedtime.fm. If you've been enjoying Peace Out, we hope you consider becoming a Patreon or donating a tip via PayPal. Details can be found at bedtime.fm slash support. How are you? Thanks for joining us today. This is Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel, and today we're going to do something different. 
Today, we're going to practice focusing on one thing, music. I chose a beautiful classical piece that I hope you like. Are you comfortable? Take a minute to adjust your body so that you are. You can sit down or lie down for this one, whichever feels best for you. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and let it out. We do the calm down countdown before each story to get our minds and attitudes in the right place. We want to slow down and focus our breathing. Let's keep that in mind as you breathe in when you hear the numbers and breathe out in between. Ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. There won't be any movement or actions today, so wherever you are, you can really let yourself relax because you'll be there for the next few minutes. Keep your eyes closed and breathe. We're going to listen to the music in just a minute. As it plays, try to focus only on the music. Forget about where you are, what you may look like right now, what you're doing after this, what you're having for lunch or dinner. Just focus on the music, the different notes and rhythms and how the music makes you feel. And guess what? You'll lose your focus at some point. That's totally normal, so don't worry about it. In fact, I bet if you ask the grown-ups that you're with to try this with you, they'll probably find it a little challenging too. I definitely do. All you have to do when that happens is notice that your focus is not on the music anymore and then bring your attention back to the music. That's it. Now this might happen a few times during the song. Again, it's okay. Remember, just bring your attention back to the music and try again. This exercise is about focusing and more specifically, trying to focus. Are you ready? Remember, focus on the music, and if you find your thoughts wandering, just bring your attention back to the music. And breathe. Let's give it a try.
How did you find that? Was it easy or challenging to focus on just the music? Where did your tension or thoughts wander to? Why do you think that was? How do you feel about the experience? Let's end by thanking our bodies and minds for taking us through this focusing exercise. Give yourself a hug. Well done, everyone. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being you. Until next time, peace out and peace within. This Peace Out episode was written and narrated by Chanel Sang. Sound and editing by Rob Griffiths. Peace Out is part of Bedtime FM. You can listen to more relaxation stories at bedtime.fm slash peace out or on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. Hello. We're winding down our first season of Peace Out. Just three more episodes to go. I'm coming up to my summer break here in Canada. So I'll be spending time with my daughters, swimming, running, reading, and also writing and recording season two of Peace Out for September. The Bedtime FM team is already helping me line up ideas and writing stories for that, so I'm so excited about where Peace Out is going, and I hope you subscribe to us so that you don't miss it. Thank you. Hello again. Thanks for joining us today here at Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. I'm Chanel, and today we're going to the circus. Let's start by sitting down. Cross your legs and close your eyes. Let's start with the calm down countdown. Breathe in and out. Keep breathing as I count down. 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep your eyes closed and use your imagination to picture this a huge tent with red and white stripes. There are little triangle flags strung up all around the tent. What color are they? The flags are gently waving in the breeze. Let's wave our bodies too. Gently rock from side to side, side to side. And there are bright spotlights shining, circles of light moving around. Can you see them? Sit up tall and lift your chin up a little. And now, keeping your eyes closed, turn your head to one side like you're looking over your shoulder. Now turn your head back to the middle, facing forward. Turn your head to the other side, looking over your other shoulder. Do a few more turns on your own now and picture the spotlights roving around the circus tent with its flags. One of the lights has just passed the big banner hanging over the tent entrance. It says, Circus Spectacular in big letters. What else can you see? 
Very nice, everyone. This is helping us warm up for the main event. Because guess what? I just heard that Circus Spectacular is looking for kids to be part of today's special performance. How amazing is that? Oh, look over there. It's the ringmaster. She's got a black top hat on and a coat with long tails on it. She's holding a microphone and announcing that it's time for Circus Spectacular's new mini performers. That's us. Our first performance is with the contortionist. The contortionist is able to bend his body in different ways. Let's try. Keep your eyes closed and stretch up one arm to the sky. Reach over with that arm to the opposite side so that your arm is across your chest. Keep it in place by using your other hand or arm to hold it gently. Look over the shoulder that's being stretched right now so that you're looking at one side and your outstretched hand is reaching towards the other. Breathe in deeply a few times, in and out, holding this pose. Now let it go. Let's try the same thing with our other arm. Reach it up high and now across your chest. Hold it up gently with your opposite hand. And now look over the shoulder that's being stretched. Take a few breaths. And let it go. Nice. Now that your arms are all nice and warmed up, you can reach over and give yourself a pat on the back for a job well done. Okay, now we're moving on to the clown. All circuses need clowns to make us laugh. <laughs> Laughing is not only fun, but it's good for us too. We're stretching the muscles in our face and we begin to breathe faster, which sends more oxygen to our bodies. We're going to stretch our face muscles now. Keep your eyes closed. And now make a really silly face. The silliest face you can make. Scrunch up your nose, stick out your tongue, whatever you want to do. And hold that silly face for three breaths. And now relax your face muscles so that they feel loose, no tension at all. Let's try that one more time. This time, think of another funny face to make. Keep your eyes closed and make your funny face. Hold that face for another three breaths. And relax your face muscles. Ah. You all make great clowns. All right, are you ready for the last challenge? This one's going to take a lot of imagination. But I know that you have an amazing imagination after coming along with me through our other Peace Out stories. We've imagined ourselves going to the moon, underwater, walking through the woods, and flying around the world. So turn that imagination on one more time as we fly through the air with the greatest of ease on the trapeze. A trapeze looks like a swing with a bar for a seat. The trapeze is high, high up at the top of the circus tent. Keeping your eyes closed, look up to the ceiling and imagine the trapeze swinging and the trapeze artists flipping and flying through the air, catching the next trapeze bar at the last moment. Imagine what that looks like. Imagine the circus performers swinging and doing flips. And now look forward again. It's your turn. 
Use that imagination to picture yourself up at the very tall stand near the top of the tent. Look down at the cheering crowd below, all the different colors they're wearing dotting the stands. And you're so far above them, they look like the size of mice from up here. Everyone is a little afraid of something. Everyone, even grown-ups. If you're afraid of heights, guess what? You don't have to be right now because it's all in your mind. You're safe right now. So let's look forward in our mind, toward the trapeze bar that's hanging right in front of you. It's a silver bar, and the chains are securely fastened to the trapeze structure, strong and steady. And it's our turn to be strong and steady because it's time to grab the bar and swing. Reach your arms up now and pretend you're holding on to the bar. Got it? Good. Now let's start to swing. Keep your arms up and lean your body and arms forward as far as you can. And now lift your body back up and even lean a little backwards if you can. Try doing that at a gentle pace three more times. And this time, try breathing in as you lean forwards and breathe out when you lean back. Go ahead now for three more times. Great. I think we're ready for the big jump. You can put down your arms and give them a shake if you'd like. Then rest them by your side or in your lap. This will be all imagination. Imagine someone hanging from their knees, upside down, on another trapeze. Who is it? Is it a friend? Are you imagining someone in your family? Or maybe just a real circus trapeze artist there to teach you how it's done. Now whoever you've imagined is swinging towards you with their arms reaching to you. Watch them as they swing far back and close again. Their hands so close you could reach them if you jump. Wait for them to swing back to you again. Take a deep breath. And jump! Grab their hands and feel them pull you through the air. You can feel that they have a strong hold on you. You made it! If you'd like, rock gently forward and back right now. Keeping your back straight and your chin up. Hear the audience gasp. <gasps> and cheer when they see that you've done it. Can you feel the air rushing past your face and blowing your hair back as you fly back and forth? If you're rocking, slowly come back to center. Your performance was a hit. Everyone in the stands has jumped to their feet cheering and clapping it's time for a final bow stretch your legs out in front of you then spread your feet as far as you comfortably can when you're ready lean forward like you're taking a bow using your hands to crawl forward as you do only go as far as is comfortable now come back up slowly, crossing your legs again, sitting up tall and proud, chin lifted up, hands on your knees or lap. Congratulations! You were a super circus spectacular performer. How do you feel? Which was your favorite part? Thank you for your efforts here today. 
Thank you for listening. Thank you for being you. Until next time, peace out and peace within. Thank you for listening to Peace Out. Today's story was written and narrated by Chanel Sang. Sound and editing by Rob Griffiths. You can find more relaxation stories at bedtime.fm slash peace out. Or find Peace Out on iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher. If you want to hear more about the podcast and about behind the scenes, check out the Good Stuff Kids podcast, where the lovely Mike Mason interviewed me about Peace Out. Mike is so great, and his podcast is full of, well, good stuff for kids, including music, performers, authors, sports, and more. You can listen to the interview and his awesome show at goodstuffpod.com. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. It's spring here, so that means we're outside almost every day after school because my kids love to ride their bikes around our neighborhood. Do you like to ride bikes too? Today for our relaxation story, we're going to head out on our bikes, off for some fun and adventure. Are you ready? Let's get our helmets on and get ready to cycle. Have a seat on the floor, crossing your legs if that's comfortable. Sit up tall. Lift your chin so that it is parallel to the ground. Close your eyes. Breathe. As I do the calm down countdown, Try to visualize the path we're going to cycle on. Some of you may imagine a dirt path through the green woods. Others may think of a sidewalk in a familiar neighborhood. Maybe some of you will imagine a gravel trail through a park. Hold that picture in your head. Ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep our eyes closed. We're going to relax today, but work our imaginations. So let's start by imagining our bicycle. You can think about your own bike, or maybe a different one. What color is it? Does it have a horn? A basket? Or handlebar streamers? We have our helmets on already, so let's hop on our bikes now. Pretend you're holding onto the handlebars and lift your arms out straight in front of you. Now let's imagine that we're on a trail that's twisting left and right. Move your hands backwards and forwards like you're steering. Take big breaths in through your nose and long breaths out from your mouth. Put your arms down now, placing your hands on your knees. Make sure you're keeping your posture straight. 
Let's imagine that we're going up a hill now. Do you see it there in front of you? What does it look like? Is it a grassy hill with a thin, flattened path carved in it by hundreds of bikes and footsteps before you? Is it up a steep sidewalk? Hold that picture in your head as you begin to lean backwards from the hips now, keeping your back straight. Lean as far back as you comfortably can without losing your balance. And come back to center. We've made it to the top of the hill. Take a moment here to look at the view, imagining what you can see from up here. All right, it's time to cycle down the hill. Sit up tall. Take a deep breath in and let it out as you lean forward from the hips. Keep your back straight as you lean forward. Imagine the wind on your face as the bike speeds down the hill, faster and faster, until it begins to slow down as the ground levels. Now move back to center. Wonderful. Now we're really moving along on the bike trail. We'll need to make a couple of turns up ahead. Do you know the hand signals to use when you want to make a turn? Using hand signals are part of bike safety because it lets other cyclists and drivers know where you're going to move. Let's take that next left up ahead. We'll let the people behind us know we mean to turn left by sticking out our left arm straight out to the left side. Let's hold it there for five seconds. Great, you can put your arm down now. There's a right turn ahead now. There are two ways to signal that you're going to turn right. You can stick out your right arm straight out to your right side. Let's give that a try now. Good. The other way is to stick out your left arm. But this time, bend your forearm at the elbow up towards the sky so that your arm is making an L shape. Give that a try. Which did you prefer? Choose one of the right turn signals and do it again now. Hold it for five seconds. Very nice. You can put your arm down now. Hey, there's a perfect place to have a rest. We'll stop there, so let's make the stop signal. Stick out your left arm straight out to the side again. Now bend your forearm down at the elbow, pointing it towards the ground. Your arm should look a bit like a number seven. Okay, you can put your arm down again. We can't finish a relaxation story about bike riding without using our legs to cycle. Take the next couple of moments to lie down on the floor or on your bed. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and out. Another breath in and out. One more time. Good. Lift up your legs so that you're ready to pedal. And start pedaling. Pedal on your own for five breaths. When you're done, pull your knees to your chest. Do you feel a little stretch in your back? Gently lower your legs to the ground now. Take a moment to make any adjustments so that you're comfortable. Before we go, 
We're going to try to relax our bodies from head to toe. Close your eyes. Let's start at the top. Every time we get to a part of the body, try to focus on that one part and let it totally relax, like it's just melting into the ground. I know that might sound a little weird, but trust me, it'll feel really great. First, relax your head. Feel it getting heavier against the ground. Relax your face too. This might mean letting your mouth relax too and drop open a little. Now let your neck relax. Your shoulders. You can shift them a little to make yourself more comfortable. Your arms are next. If you're tensing or tightening them up, let them drop. Your hands are next. Make tight fists and squeeze. Now let them go. Keep everything we've just relaxed nice and loose. Now we're moving on to your stomach. Feel it move up and down as you breathe. Hips now. Let them sink deeper. Thighs. Relax your knees and your legs. And now your feet. Flex them so that your toes are pulling towards your head. And now let them go. Feel your entire body sink a little more into the ground. Think about the earth just beneath you. You were connected to the earth as you rode your bike up and down its hills and through the wind and past the trees. And now you're even more connected to the earth as you sink even deeper. You're connected to those around you and even people across the world who are all walking on the same earth as you. Breathing the air like you, feeling the sun like you. You're even connected to the animals and plants, all who need the same things as us to live. Water, air, food, warmth. Let's remember that as we finish and move on with our day. Wherever you go next, whoever you speak to, whatever you do, Keep in mind that connection that you have with everyone and with the world. Remember that you're not isolated, which means alone. If you need someone to talk to, reach out. If you think someone might need a friend, spend some time with them. Here's a nice quote from Johann Wolfgang von Goethe that I'll end with today. In nature, we never see anything isolated, but everything in connection with something else, which is before it, beside it, under it, and over it. We're all connected, and I hope that gives you a sense of peace. So until next time, peace out, and peace within. This Peace Out episode was written and narrated by Chanel Sang, with help from the Bedtime FM team, and produced by Rob Griffiths. Thank you for listening. I wanted to say hello and thank you to Miss Rodriguez's class in the United States for listening to Peace Out Together. They posted a great photo of the class relaxing to a Peace Out story on Twitter. I hope you enjoyed today's story and that you thank Ms. Rodriguez for carving out class time for you to pause, breathe, and relax. If you have any questions, comments, or photos to share, please feel free to contact us at peaceout at bedtime.fm or on Twitter at peaceoutpodcast or on our Facebook page at bedtime.fm. Thanks again.
morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to Peace Out, stories for calming down and relaxation. My name is Chanel. I wonder where in the world you are right now. In some places in the world, it's nighttime. However, in other places, children are just getting out of bed and ready for school. Even the seasons are different in different parts of the world. The Northern Hemisphere is the half of the world above the equator. It includes places like North America, Central America, the Caribbean, Europe, most of Asia, and the northern parts of Africa and South America. For those places, it's spring right now. The flowers are blooming and the days are getting hotter and longer. It is autumn in the southern hemisphere, the half of the world below the equator, in places like the southern parts of Africa and Asia, Antarctica, Australia, most of South America, and New Zealand. The days are getting colder and shorter. The leaves on the trees have been slowly changing color from green to yellow and brown and then falling to the ground. I'm in Canada, so I'm really enjoying our spring weather right now. But one of my favorite things to do in autumn is playing in piles of leaves. How about you? Today, we're going to take a trip to the park and play in the leaves. We're going to do things a little differently today. I want you to stand up nice and tall if you can. You'll need a little bit of space around you. So if you're listening in your classroom or your bedroom, make sure that you're not too close to other people or furniture. Stand so that your feet are right below your shoulders, tall and strong. Relax your arms by your sides. Close your eyes. Roll your shoulders back and lift up your chin so that it is parallel to the floor. As I do the calm down countdown, try breathing in as I say each number, breathing out in between. Ready? 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two. One. We're at the park now. Can you feel the warmth of the sun? Tilt your head up to the sky and imagine the warm sun shining on your face. Now tilt your head down. See those leaves at your feet? They look really crunchy. Can you try crunching them with your toes? Wiggle your toes and then scrunch them together to crunch up the leaves. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Uh Uh-oh, the wind is blowing. I think it's going to blow some more leaves down off the trees. Take your hands from your sides and sweep them upwards like the wind through the trees. Now keep them stretching right up high, reaching towards the sky. You look a little bit like a tree right now. Stretch your fingers out and keep reaching. 
Now take a deep breath in. And as you let your breath out, bend your knees slightly and fold your arms and body down at the waist like you're folding your entire body in half. Let your tummy rest on your thighs and your head and arms hang down. Let's just hang here for a moment. Feel gravity pulling the weight of your head toward the ground. You can swing back and forth a little if you want. Just don't lose your balance. If you're swinging, slowly come to a stop. Use your imagination to see all the autumn leaves at your feet. There are golden yellows, bright oranges, bold reds, and earthy browns. The colors are so warm and bright. Reach your hands down to the ground or as low as you can go. Can you pick up some of those crunchy leaves? Pretend to grab some in your hands. And now, slowly roll your body up, starting at your waist, moving up vertebrae by vertebrae, until your back is straight and you're standing tall and strong again. Once you're standing straight, you can fling those leaves into the air. Imagine the ride of color and rustling sound that the leaves make as they shower to the ground. Let's do that once more. Sweep your arms right up to the sky, stretching as far up as you can go. Take a deep breath in, bend your knees slightly, and fold your body down, and pick up some leaves. Hold on tight to those leaves. Now slowly roll your body back up. And once you're standing up straight, toss those leaves up into the air again. Beautiful. Now. Have you ever made a snow angel before? Why don't we try and make a leaf angel? Slowly lower yourself to the ground and lie down on your back. Close your eyes. Take a big breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. One more time. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Bring both knees up and squeeze them to your chest. Take a deep breath in and then let it out as you slowly stretch your legs back onto the ground and lower your arms down to your sides. Ready to make a leaf angel? Stretch out your arms and legs so that you look like a star. Start moving your arms and legs now making your leaf angel. Try breathing in as your arms and legs point straight and breathe out as you move them out to the sides. As you continue to make leaf angels at your own pace, I wanted to ask if you knew why leaves change color. The trees that have leaves that will drop off are called deciduous trees. In the spring and summer, when it is warm and sunny, leaves are in charge of making food for the trees. The leaves have a chemical called chlorophyll, which absorbs the sunlight in the spring and summer and turns it into tree food. Chlorophyll is what also gives the leaves its green color. However, when autumn begins, the temperature begins to drop and the days become shorter, which means less sunlight. The chlorophyll begins to break down and the leaves lose its green color. The other pigments, which were also there to begin with, such as yellow, orange, red, and brown, start to show. All right, I think everyone's finished by now. Look at those leaf angels, brilliant. Let's stretch out one last time this time, leave your legs out 
so that your feet are further apart than your shoulders.